afternoon, good, good, good morning, good evening, whichever time you'll be watching this video. It's, welcome back. My name is TM. My channel's name is TMNJ. My name is Taraz. Welcome back to my channel. So, in this video, I'll be speaking about um, alien encounters. <laughs> my experiences that I've gone through. Just two. <laughs> um, that I yeah, tell me too. And with my encounters, the first one, mind you, I was inspired just by a YouTuber. So, and I'll be speaking of some things I learned from his video. It was very intriguing to learn. So, to begin, um, the first occurrence that happened recently that I remember. I'll talk about the second one that happened later on in time. The first occurrence that happened most recently. Um I was a uh, is at the beginning of being eighteen and It was very, very interesting. <laughs> I had, uh, from watching YouTube Ryan Cropper and his alien experiences, I went towards then sending out a beacon because I was talking to one of my guides and I sent out a beacon towards a beacon of light that humans are able to do if you put enough energy and intention towards it. I sent out a beacon to be like, okay, I'm ready for any sort of experiences to occur, right? Um, of course, I didn't say negative or positive <laughs> at all. Um, and some, I, f I felt some beings, I could hear telepathically some beings speaking to me, saying, yeah, we're here. Nice to meet you. And me being like, oh, hello. <laughs> um, and at that time, I was speaking to one of my guides, my sis. And I was asking, like, is, are they really here? And she was like, yeah, they are. <laughs> and at that point in time, that occurred is uh, I was one day I was astral traveling, and if you guys have seen my hey, you've seen my video on how to, how to astral travel, um, I wore it a very uh, a detail that you know can you can be gone for like a good amount of time, like two to four hours, an hour at times. I've been gone for 30 minutes straight. Um, it varies. Um, varies. So this time I was actually traveling and what actually happened is my, uh, it was an interesting experience. What happened is, uh, I'm going around my, my, my mind my body as far as I talked and I was in like my grandmother's basement and I was like what the hell am I in my grandmother's ba my grandmother's basement for? Why am I in her basement? I don't comprehend. And I'm thinking like maybe it's just it's just, it's just the experience. It's just just show the just go through the experience. That's what traveling. You can't you can't be helped, right? But this felt different though, because it wasn't like I was in third person or first person point of view that I could jump back and forth. No, as in I was just in my beat, my body, and just seeing things like first person point of view, exactly. And I was like, what? And it was, see to my knowledge there were six of us, three guys, three girls, because there was two guys I could see at first, they left. Or they were, they left out the basement for whatever reason, just disappeared. 
well, the first guy disappeared. The second guy, I was like, kind of watching him in a sense, like, who are you people? Who are you? And... You know, um, those old TVs from 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 right, from, right, from way back, those TVs that um had like the um outer exterior that came out. Yeah, those, that's one of the TVs that used to be in my, my grandmother's basement, way back. And what happened is Yo Gabba Gabba was playing. Me and this other girl, we were like, "Why the hell is Yo Gabba Gabba playing? What the hell?" But then as I was, I looked over and observed the room, like I just was just looking. The, the basement was so huge. It was like, mind you, my grandmother's basement is not big at all like that. It's really not. Like, it truly is not. <laughs> um, and the, her, her basement was like extended out. Like, I mean, there were beds everywhere. Straight up, like it was like a movie theater. There were beds all across, like some sort of orphanage or some sort of like hospital security stuff. I don't know. Just incredibly interesting. Like you know those movies where you see like um when the military when there's like some some sort of evacuation and you see like the um the medical care kind of like laying out the beds and all the tents. That's how it was. Except imagine a big big ass tent and like a bunch of beds lying all over the place. That's how it was. I was just like, whoa, what's going on right now? And. So I could tell, I was like, there were other individuals before me. What? <laughs> What's going on? Are more people to come? I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, until just now. But um, what happened after that is, I recall the one guy leaving out, and I was, I, it's like my consciousness traveled out of my body. And I was able to see exact because I don't remember like moving, but like my consciousness traveling, like that's in my body to kind of see where he was going. And when the staircase was so huge and so long, I was like, what? But mind you, there was no sound to the, to the staircase. Like, you know, on some staircases, how like there's sound when you walk like, the old staircases. There was no sound. It was an old staircase. It was, it was a very old staircase. There was no creaking, no nothing. I was like, what? And when he opened the door, see, in my grandmother's house, when you open the uh, basement door, there, it op like, you immediately see, like, a closet door. Literally immediately. All I saw was yellowish white light. And I was like, what the hell is this? I don't comprehend what's happening right now. Right? And out of nowhere, I took a breath of air, and the breath of air was, it felt like, you know when it's winter time, right? And you're outside, and it's cold as hell, and it's nighttime, and you take a breath of air, and it's like, it's kind of stale, but very just dry, and like, like, you know? You know the feeling? That was the feeling I got, except it was like below freezing sort of air temperature fit sensation that I got from breathing in. And it's why I knew something was up. When you're actually traveling, you can't really, you're not really aware of your breathing when you're actually traveling, given your consciousness is not in your body. Like your consciousness literally travels outside of your body. If you guys need to, yeah, this is if you need that detail. Um, and so when I took a breath in, I was like, hold on a second. My, my, my room was not cold at the time. It was very warm actually. I was like, there, this is, this, this is not good. I was like, this, I'm no longer in my room. That was, that was I could tell I was no longer in my room. And I was just like, what is happening right now? And that's when I started going to, into fight or flight <laughs> panic mode psychologically. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And then I started like, I started kicking, right? Or not kicking, but more so moving my legs heavily. And I could feel two, I could feel four arms grab my legs. Except what actually I could feel was it was an arm for each leg. 
So four beings in my two arms, like four beings grab my legs. And they, a friend of mine once said to me, energy aliens exist. And I was like, what are energy aliens? And he said to me, energy aliens are beings who can calm you down with their energy. They're made of literal energy. They can calm you down with their energy. Speak to you in whatever way. The yeah. And I was like, what? And I watched uh, the YouTube Ryan Cropper and he explained his uh, experience with energy aliens. He didn't really, I don't think really, I don't recall him saying they were energy aliens, but that's what I got grasped. Because at times you'll speak of an experience, but not really speak of such factors, I guess you could say. And elaborate to really clarify things for some people. Um, yeah. These beings were energy aliens who literally, uh, they were able to calm me down with their, I mean, literally set me, put me in a trance, like stay with their energy. And I was so incredibly calm. Like I was just like, there was no sort of fight. There was no sort of like confusion, nothing incredibly calm. And he said to me, we're not going to harm you. And they said, we are each a thousand years old and we're from Tiricamastan. If you need to know how that's, from, how that's spelled, it's T-I-R-I-K-M, yeah, K-A-M-S-T-A-N. Wait, my bad, S-T-A-H-N. So that's how that planet is spelled, and that planet is somewhere in the galaxy, I suppose. <laughs> or somewhere in this universe. And they, they're beings who are the Teletubbies. Basically, like, the, so what I learned from, my, from the YouTuber was the concept of when it comes, and especially, it makes sense, it's an account of this beings, whether they be demons, spirits of any sort of variety, they'll make themselves look like something that's very appealing to you, or if the demon will make itself appear to you in the form that you're afraid of. If it's a spirit or some sort of angel over there, they'll, they'll, they'll appear to you in some sort of cuddly manner, right? So for me, what ended up occurring is these beings appeared to, appeared to me in the form of the Teletubbies. Yeah. Teletubbies, <laughs> except they were tall as hell, mind you, and like I'm six foot straight up, and they were like as tall as me, or rather at least five eleven, five ten, <laughs> and I mean a little bit shorter, maybe. Um, and they they were each of them was orange. There was four of them. Each of them was orange. And what happened is. Uh, their faces, you know how the teletubbies, their faces would move in a sense? Their faces were, they all have the same face. Every last one of them. And their faces as they spoke did not move, so they were, so they were speaking to me. They didn't just calm me down with their energy, they were speaking to me through, through pure telepathy. Because it was like, yeah. <laughs> And what then occurred is, uh, they, they began to leave out, like literally they, be, they began to leave and they didn't tell me they told me they weren't going to hurt me, but I could tell there was a lot more to what they were doing because I was not aware of things at all. And I literally re remember seeing them just straight up, like when they were leaving out the house, they phased out of the walls. They phased through, through the walls. Literally, they, they just walked through, through the wall, so they, like, the wall was nothing. And, like, the wall didn't collapse or anything. They just literally, like, think about the flash walking through a wall. Or a spirit walking through a wall. That's literally what it was. And I was like, what? 
and mind you, I wasn't shocked or anything, but the way the, the energy they had beyond like under the trance I was under, I couldn't I didn't come to consciousness. Like I didn't come to full like function functionability, is what I'll say. Full full functioning until after they left. And when they left out the house, mind you it was nighttime, apparently. Um well, it's nighttime for me too, but it was like, I'll say it's nighttime. And when I came to, I could feel the gravity in my room change. Like the energetic frequency, the gravity, everything changed. Like it shifted when they left. And I was like, did that just happen? And I was talking to my God, like, what the hell? <laughs> This happened. And I was like, what were they doing? And I was like, wait a second. I was on my bed, quote unquote, but on a table, I presume, or some sort of surface. And they held my legs. So I was like, wait a second. They were experimenting on me. Like, I, I could just intuitively tell what had occurred. And I was like, they were experimenting on me. And I was asking my guides why. And they were, and like, they were saying, you know why. And intuitively, I could feel that they were experimenting on me to see where I was within my being. Like, what abilities, what prowess, how I developed I had become. That's what, that's what they were trying to see. For some other, for some sort, for some certain reason. And... Yeah, after they had left the trance, like, state was undone. And I was able to like literally think and be like, wait, what's like, I was, I was seeing them face, face through, through the walls, like nothing. And I was like, it didn't phase me at all. I was just still in the trance. And when I came back, I was just like, what? Um, so that was the first experience. I spoke to my mother about this. She did. She just looked at me like, she had no comment, <laughs> no whatsoever. I think in some parents that more times than less in this age, they and age have no comment whatsoever because they don't really, they don't know, they don't know what to say about the event whatsoever. They don't. <laughs> um, but then the next thing that occurred was uh. Oh, what happened? I was about I was about ten or eleven years old, or younger than that. I don't really recall. It was in my childhood. Excuse me. And it was on a weekend. When I was younger, I did not like being in my bed alone. Not whatsoever. The guy literally was like. My mother was like the only individual I could literally sleep throughout the night with. So that was something. Um, and what occurred is what I remember. So some people go through sleep paralysis, natural projection, heavily when they're younger, and you just don't realize it. <laughs> And with me, I I thought it was astral projection, sleep paralysis, but that wasn't it at all. Because I, I thought, I was watching the one video, I was a video last night, I was looking back at memories, right? And I was like, that, that's, that's a memory that really stands out in my, in my own being. Like, it really stood out to me, because I was a, like, I was literally like, oh, it was bad. Like, it was, it's like you don't know what's happening, what's going on within your body. And you're fully consciously aware to a certain degree. You can't open your eyes. And you're like, kind of like fighting within yourself, which happens with that sleep paralysis when you're about to go through astral projection. This is different than astral projection. This is my first experience with an encounter, actually. And um, what happened is I woke up, right? I had woken up at like 12 in the morning I was trying to go back to sleep. And as I'm trying to go back to sleep, 
all of a sudden, it's like my body begins locking up. Incredibly. And... What I remember is... It was like seeing images. And mind you, when you're going through sleep paralysis, you don't see images. As far as my experience is going, I don't see images when I'm going through sleep paralysis. None at all. And these images I was seeing was like people taking... It was like... I couldn't see the faces at all. But it was beings taking photos of me. People, as I presumed. But beings taking photos of me. And I... It was like left and right. It was like literal flashes. I wasn't even... like It was just flash, flash, flash. I was like... And like I couldn't move my body at all. Completely locked up. And mind you, when I came to what occurred, I just, I, when I came to, it was daytime. It was morning. And I got up. And I was telling my grandmother about it, but she didn't really comprehend. At all. Um, I was speaking on. Because my experience was very different from her own. But then again, I wasn't really elaborating on detail about things like that. I kind of was, but I kind of wasn't. Um, the, uh, and then I learned that, uh, Extraterrestrial beings or interdimensional beings, they come across kids basically because children are more imprintable and suggestible than adults, more times than less. Um, given they're very pure and uh, their consciousness is not fully developed. So they'll easily like, you know, do things in that. When and like if you're asked, if you're asked a question, of course, you'll like they'll answer, but like they won't be thinking, oh, this must be suspicious or any of that. They'll just be like, you know, just going about things nonchalantly, like just innocently. So I learned that basically again, interdimensional beings are aliens. Uh, extraterrestrials, I'm not saying aliens, that can be obviously offensive given we are aliens too. Um these beings really go towards people who are still developing in consciousness, younger individuals. And when they have no use for you, they stop coming around to see you and everything. But I can definitely say that from my first experience, which I had no idea until I looked back at my past, um, my body locked up and everything. That was definitely not sleep paralysis. I can definitely say that when I look back at things. <laughs> um, and just really remembering, I was literally like rocking in my like being, like really fighting it. And when I go through sleep paralysis, I, uh, I can't really rock within my being. The emotions intensity I was going through, I was completely aware of so many things. And the imagery I was seeing, it was like... Some sort of experience was happening that I couldn't comprehend. That I needed, I most likely needed the memory regression to comprehend what happened. Um, it was incredibly odd. Let I think back on things. But yeah. <laughs> um, I'm like trying to dig deeper and like that's all that's all that, that comes back. Just the memory of uh, this photo snapping and everything. Nothing else. Um, yeah, that, those are my experiences, guys. Uh, from Alien Encounters. Well, my bad, extraterrestrial and inter interdimensional being encounters. Let me stop saying alien. <laughs>
Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys will probably have your experiences if you're on the shed. I'd love to hear about them in the comment section. Um, and yeah, hope you have a wonderful day. My name is Taraz. My channel is TMNJ. Goodbye.